and he practices medicine there in a combo, free of charge, to help those who are poor. He could run for mayor and win hands down. He's not interested in that. He's interested in helping people. But he told us that he was one of the ones who went with Jules Rudd to excavate these. He excavated them uh, with him underground that was hard packed, covered with grass and with cactus. And uh, on one occasion, they got literally two big sacks, these uh, uh, what we would call toe sacks, uh, burlap sacks, uh, full of these figurines in one trip, put them on the back of a burrow and came back. A uh, very credible witness uh, who is certainly willing to affirm that this is the case even today. And then we have uh, Mr. Martinez, who was formerly chief of the federal police in the area just uh, about 10 years earlier when this picture was taken. He is now retired. Uh, and he is uh, an interesting, uh, he tells an interesting story because he actually confiscated over 3,000 of these figurines from two individuals who were illegally excavating at El Chivo. They had found where a number of these were buried and they were just digging up a storm in the middle of the night and selling them across the border. And he caught them and put them in the federal penitentiary. They were convicted of dealing in illegal artifacts. And so the federal government decided these were real, authentic antiquities and put them in jail. He said among these artifacts that they had excavated were, in, were dinosaurs, and he drew sketches of several of them. Uh, they were then added to the Yulesrud collection, which is there in a Combo still today. Uh, but some people will say, well, Yulesrud was the source of all of these. Well, we, we can prove they were there before Yulesrud. We can prove they were excavated after Yulesrud. And the federal government actually helped us verify that by convicting these people who had excavated them there at El Chivo uh, and uh, are now doing time for that crime. Then we have uh, Mr. Perel, very interesting individual. He was uh, former director of archaeology of the Combo Zone of the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, the largest anthropological museum in the world. At the time Yulesrud was in the Combro, he was uh, the director of archaeology for the area, and it was his job to verify and to authenticate the finds. And he and Yulesrud were actually antagonists. They didn't get along well at all because Yulesrud didn't go to the trouble of getting permits most of the time. And uh, he would uh, complain and uh, threaten to put him in jail, and uh, they fussed and fought all the time. But he saw the figurines that Yules Rudd excavated. Furthermore, the farmers at the time continually found such figurines, and he was called in to authenticate and verify. He said he saw hundreds of them excavated by farmers that Yules Rudd had nothing to do with. Many of them took them to Yules Rudd, uh, who would often pay the farmers just a small fee to help increase his collection. He worked with Ramon Pinochon, who is perhaps the most famous archaeologist in Mexico history. He was 20 years uh, president of the National Museum of Anthropology, uh, again, the largest anthropological museum in the world. And they particularly worked together on a dig at Chapicuro uh, in the 1940s, uh, where they were getting ready to flood the area, putting up a dam, and had to move some of the tombs, the graves, of the ancient Chapicuro sites. And here we see a picture of uh, that dig with uh, an early picture of Ramon Pinochon and Beatrice, his wife, whom he met on that trip and married. She became an archaeologist and uh, is still an archaeologist serving in one of the museums there in Mexico City today. We found the uh, permit from Ina, which uh, authorized this dig. We found the notes. This is actually in the museum in Chapicuro of the dig, and they have displayed a couple of the pictures. Uh, I took this picture of some of the artifacts that came from that dig, uh, supervised by Ramon Pinochon. Mr. Perea, who was there, representing the museum at the time, he was the director of that area, worked with them. He says, in this tomb, this, the ones in this picture, they found a dinosaur. That is, not a figurine, but an actual dinosaur that was about 30 feet long. He said it had the short little front feet and the huge long legs, about three foot head 
with the huge teeth. We have his recorded testimony, about two hours of a detailed description of exactly what they found. He said, Ramon Pinochon took pictures of this. He has the pictures. Well, that pricked our ears up. Uh, Ramon Pinochon had been dead about two years at that time, but his wife, we suspected, would have the pictures. We went to her. She said, yes, I had them. I've seen the pictures. Uh, I have donated them to ENA, the Institute of Archaeology. Uh, well, that was disappointing because they had stonewalled our effort to get permits. But she called them at our request, asked them to allow uh, us to examine these photographs. We got in the cab. We went immediately to the Institute of Archaeology, walked in the door. The supervisor there who met us recognized me in my previous attempts to get permits, and he said, no, you cannot see them. He had promised Beatri Beatrix Pinochon that uh, we would be allowed, but he says, I don't care what I promised, you can't see them. This was a stonewall. Uh, we've run into this several times. That information is there. It's being covered up. Uh, interestingly, in association with that, we found this picture of Walter Mayulsrud, which is in the museum there today, uh, the Yulsrud Museum, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, and here he's standing with a large dinosaur bone. In his book, Enigmas of the Past, uh, he describes finding, uh, partially buried, a dinosaur with uh, fresh bones, that is, unfossilized, and here he's standing there with one of those bones. And we took the picture to some experts to see if they, they could identify that. Uh, and here we see Brooks Britt uh, of the Department of Geology at Brigham Young University uh, making the comment, the large bone appears to be a sauropod rib. That's, and so we find uh, the tooth from the horse. Uh, we find the sauropod rib we find the testimony of a buried dinosaur from uh, Mr. Pena, who, who was director uh, of the uh, Institute of Archaeology there for the Acombro Zone, um, or at least the Museum of Archaeology for the Acombro Zone, all testifying that there were dinosaurs not too long ago, uh, unfossilized remains. As we look at the incredible variety of styles and materials and subjects of the 33,000 figurines, it's just mind-boggling. I think we're looking at a pig here, maybe. Uh, probably a pig here, but this wasn't made by the same fellow. This is a totally different style. And maybe that's a pig, but certainly very, very different. Possibly we're looking at a dog here. Uh, another one here with his master that looks a lot like Chewbacca. <laughs> uh, here's, uh, I guess, a bird, rather stylistically done, and another totally different bird. But the array of styles is just uh, mind-boggling. Uh, Dr. Uh, or Professor Collins estimated there were at least a hundred different artists that were involved in producing this vast array. It's interesting to know, notice the, the uh, variety of ethnicity that's represented. This appears to be an Egyptian uh, motif uh, from some of the figurines, again, from the collection. And many of them are very oriental in style, as you can see here. And some of them are very African in style. Uh, it seems undeniable that these have an African appearance, while others are, are very European. Again, from 3,000 years ago. Notice the very uh, artistically done dinosaur here compared with a totally different style, not done by the same artist. And I don't know who did that, maybe somebody with a, a nightmare that got scared to death by them. But certainly different styles. Here's a rather stylistic, uh, artistically done dinosaur, very different. Some of them almost cartoonish. Um, again, totally different styles, different materials, uh, obviously different artists. But a vast array, uh, and as we look at the general configuration, is there any doubt what's being depicted here? Uh, they had to have been seeing the dinosaurs uh, some 3,000 years ago. 
And here's just example after example. This Diplodocus type looks like it stepped out of a Spielberg movie. Uh, again, if you know dinosaurs, you recognize immediately some of these forms, and though some of them are uh, cartoonish and stylistically done, uh, there's no question as to what we're looking at. Here's the Stegosaurus. This is another one, but a different artist did this one in a totally different style. Again, one after another, you see unquestionable resemblance. Many of them uh, were in the form of